Now let's begin our discussion on the motion of charges within electric fields. So whenever we have an electric charge and we place that electric charge in an electric field, that electric charge will experience a force as a result of that electric field. Now we define the electric field to be the force divided by the charge, where the force is the force that this quantity of charge experiences within that field. So if we take this equation, rearrange it, and solve for our force, we see the force is equal to the product of the charge multiplied by the electric field. So, let's look at the following scenario. Let's suppose we have two point charges. Point charge number one, which is a positive and stationary point charge, and point charge number two, which is a negative point charge, and which is allowed to move. So, what exactly will begin to take place? Well, this point charge number one will create an electric field, and let's call that electric field E1. This electric field will create a force, and that force will pull on this point charge number two, and it will pull it in this direction because these charges are opposite charges. Now let's try to determine the acceleration that this point charge number two will experience as a result of this force, where this force F21 is the force that charge two experiences as a result of charge one. So by the second law of motion, we know that the sum of the forces acting on this charge is equal to the product of the mass of this charge multiplied by its acceleration. So in this case, what exactly is the sum of our forces? Well, we have one force acting on that charge. It's the force F21. And this force F21 is simply the product of the charge of this point charge Q2 multiplied by the electric field that is created by this stationary point charge number one. Let's call that E1. And this is equal to the product of the mass of point charge 2 multiplied by its acceleration given by A2. So we can solve for the A and we get the following equation. The acceleration in such a case is equal to the product of Q, the charge, and the electric field divided by the mass. So, let's look at one application by looking at the following example, which has three parts. Suppose an electron is placed between two parallel plates of opposite charge as shown. So we have a negatively charged plate and a positively charged plate. So the electron accelerates from rest and ends up moving through the opening as shown in a following diagram. Let's suppose the electric field is constant and it's equal to 1 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb and the distance between these two parallel plates is given to be 2 centimeters. Now these charges should all be positive charges. Now, let's move on to part A. Calculate the acceleration of the electron assuming we know the mass of the electron and the charge of our electron. So we essentially want to use this equation. So, we follow the same steps that we followed here and we get to the following equation. So our acceleration is equal to the product of the charge and the electric field divided by the mass. So 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs multiplied by the constant electric field, 1 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb, divided by the mass of our electron, 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And we get a value of 1.76 times 10 to the 16 meters per second squared. Now let's move on to part B. In part B, we want to calculate the velocity as it reaches the opening as shown in this diagram. So our object, our point charge, travels a distance d. So our displacement is given by d. 
So because our electric field is constant, that means the force and the acceleration is constant, so we can apply the following kinematics equation. So our final velocity squared is equal to our initial velocity squared multiplied by two times its acceleration found in part A multiplied by our displacement. So we solve our equation for the final velocity V. We see that V is equal to the square root of V initial squared plus 2A multiplied by our displacement. Now this quantity is zero because it begins from rest. So we plug in our quantities, we take the square root and we get a velocity of about 2.65 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. And finally, let's move on to part C. When we deal with electrostatic forces, we usually ignore the force of gravity. That is because the force of gravity is usually much smaller than the electrostatic force show that this is true in this case. So what exactly is our electrostatic force that is acting on this point charge? Well, the electrostatic force is the product of this multiplied by this. So the charge of our electron multiplied by the electric field. We multiply these two quantities and we get about 1.6 times 10 to negative 14 newtons. Now what about the force of gravity? So the force of gravity acts on this point charge. But what exactly is this force? Well, the force of gravity is equal to the mass of our electron multiplied by the gravitational constant g. Now, this g is simply our gravitational field, and it's given to be 9.8 meters per second squared. So we multiply the mass by our g, the constant, and we get about 8.9 times 10 to the negative 30 newtons. So if we take the ratio of the electrostatic force to the gravitational force, we get 1.8 times 10 to the 15. So we see that the electrostatic force is about 1.8 times 10 to the 15 times larger than the force of gravity. So because the force of gravity is so much smaller than the electrostatic force, that implies we can usually ignore the force of gravity.